and welcome to Prophecy Insights with Bro Steph. And I am Bro Steph. Uh, at the top here, just like to thank you for listening and tuning in. And you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all by going to brosteph.com. Brosteph.com, my connection zone website will connect you to everything that uh, that I do as far as social media and that kind of thing. Today's <clears throat> podcast I'm going to title Upside Down. And uh, I just want to relay a story to you that I heard today on a radio show that just blew my mind. And <clears throat> this happened in uh, Canada. So <clears throat> there is a waxing shop, you know, where women traditionally go in and they get their legs, I guess, done and faces done and other parts of the body, they get waxed. Well, with this upside down world that we find ourselves in now where men are women and women are men. And I heard today something like 54 different gender types. I mean, it's gotten to be that ridiculous. So this lady owns this shop is well known in Canada for her waxing uh, technique and this uh, individual comes into the shop says that she's a girl but really this person has male parts and she says the owner says you know what uh, I don't wax male parts. I just do women here. And the person insists that it is a woman. Or should I say, to be politically correct, he is a woman. Uh, that's what he said. And the owner of the shop said, no, you have junk that is male oriented, your parts are male oriented, therefore I can't help you, I can't service you because I don't do male parts. So I guess the he slash she gets a bit offended and then starts to raise holy terror I guess goes to the media, this thing hits the news wires, and now we've got, I guess, a lawsuit that is being directed at the owner of this female waxing establishment. Now, I don't know about you, but it's getting a little bit ridiculous. Here's another story I heard. There's a new gender type. I may not have it completely right. I, I couldn't believe it when I heard it. LGBT plus two. Plus two. Now, don't ask me what it means, but it's a new gender type of some sort. Now, the person that claimed to be this gender type who said that she was a guy wanted to go topless in a community swimming pool where there are young children swimming. And so this girl that said she was a guy wanted to swim without a bra, without 
uh, a blouse without a bathing suit covering her top and allowing her breasts to be exposed because after all, even though she has breasts, real breasts, because she is a woman, even though she says she's a guy, she wanted to let all of it hang out in all its glory and then let the parents go home trying to explain to their young children what that was all about. Um, let me read you a Bible scripture that's going to put all of this into context because at Prophecy Insights, you do know what we do is connect the dots between the Bible, and the headlines of today. And these two stories that I'm relaying to you come out of the headlines, if you can even believe it. Turn in your Bibles with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4. Let me get my senior citizen reading glasses on, and let me read this to you. 2 Timothy 3, going to start at chapter 1, going to read through chapter five, or verse 5. Chapter 2, or 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Okay? But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And I would like to add that if you're a woman and you say you're a man, I would say that's unholy. Unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now, if you're a guy and you say you're a girl or you're a girl and say that you're a guy, I would say lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God would apply to that individual. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people, turn away. All right. There's your biblical reference that things are just getting out of control. And, you know, at other places in the Bible, it says that the day would come when Good would be called evil, and evil would be called good. And we're living in that day today. We think it's good for a man to say he's a woman and for a woman to say she's a man. And then to take it to its furthest extremes, the people that are in these transgender type categories... There are some that are very radical. Notice I didn't say all. I said some that are very radical. And what do they want to do? They want to impose their warped sense of gender on everybody around them. And so now they want to take to court and try to ruin the business or the lives of those that want to behave appropriately. What do I mean by appropriately? Men are men and women are women. It's that simple. I don't care what the society says. I don't care that society says that you can be a guy and say you're a woman and you can go undress in a locker room full of women when you're a guy. Society says, oh, that's okay now. No, it's not. It's wrong. It's biblically wrong. It's confusing to the children. 
And it's really, really doing damage to our society at large. And I think the day is coming when God's going to lower the boom and drop the mallet, drop the hammer on this world for its warped sense of right and wrong, its warped sense of of homosexuality being okay, lesbianism being okay, and now transgenderism, and then we've got all these other categories that have sprung out of this warped sense of self. And it all goes against God's principles, God's sense of morality. You know, and it's as though the devil today is doing all he can to undermine anything that is godly. And he's warping it. He's turning it inside out, upside down. And this world is becoming a place of violence, confusion. And remember, who is the author of confusion? Not God, but the devil. The Bible teaches that. He's the author of confusion. He's been a liar from the beginning, a murderer. Deceit was found in his heart. And the Lord threw him out of heaven, threw him out down to the earth. And the day is coming when he will be banned forever from the heavenlies and he will be here on earth doing his best to destroy it and its people. And he is going to go after the Jews and the Christians, Bible-believing people with a vengeance. He hates anything to do with Jesus Christ, with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. He hates it. So that's where we find ourselves today. I just wanted to share those two headlines with you and then tie it to scripture rather forcefully. Um, Now, am I being unreasonable? Am I mean? Because I'm standing on the truth, the biblical word of God? No. You know, when Noah was building the ark, and it was for, what, like 120 years he was building that ark? And he was preaching, in a sense, preaching. I mean, the people came to said, what the heck are you doing? I mean, it never rained. They didn't know what rain was. And he's building the ark, and the people are going, what are you doing? Have you lost your mind? And he says, hey, judgment's coming. Uh, God is pretty much done with our, our violence and our sin and our behavior, and judgment is coming. Oh, you're out of your mind. And he just kept building the ark until one day. Uh, God said, get the animals in, get your family in, Noah, and then God himself shut the door. Notice it wasn't Noah that shut the door. God shut the door. And when that door was shut, that was it. Judgment came immediately after that door was shut, sealed, and locked. And that's how it's going to be with this world we live in today. You know, we're out here, people like me, people like you, we're out here sharing with the world what the Bible says about morality, about right and wrong, good and evil, and how God wants us to behave and and think about these things. There's a standard, a biblical standard God wants us to live by. And so we're sharing this with people. They think we're out of our minds. We're too callous. We're now, we're anti-Semitic, some would say. We're evil. We're mean-spirited. We offend everyone around us. 
Well, one day, there's going to be a final trumpet that blows. And we're going to disappear, those of us that believe in Jesus Christ. We're just going to disappear off the face of the earth. And then immediately after that, judgment, the wrath of God is going to fall on this earth for at least a three-year, three-and-a-half-year period. And you would think people would fall to their knees and ask God for his forgiveness and repent, but they won't. They're going to shake their fist at God out of anger and hatred. But God will deal with them severely. Just read Revelation chapter 6 through 19. Read the bowl judgments in the book of Revelation. Read the trumpet judgments. Read the seal judgments. They're horrible. Horrible. And people will be living through that. And that is called the wrath of God. It's if it, Jesus said in Matthew 24, if the time wasn't shortened, then all of mankind would be destroyed. That seven-year final period of human history called the end of days, Daniel's 70th week, the final seven years in the book of Daniel that Daniel talks about, Okay, if the wrath of God lasted a full seven years, all humanity would be wiped out. So the Lord shortened up the time to the time of Jacob's trouble. Just read Jeremiah 30 and 31. If you want a clear view of what's going to happen, read Jeremiah chapter 25. And that time will be condensed. Half of the world's population will be wiped out all because of the kinds of warped, warped ways of thinking and sin that we're seeing in our world today. So with that being said, I'd like to say this. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, then I would highly recommend you consider bowing your knee bowing your heart, humbling yourself before him, and call upon him. Romans chapter 10, call upon him. Believe in your heart he is God. He is the Savior of the world, that Jesus came to die for your sin. Believe that, that he shed his blood for you that he, he lived a perfect sinless life for you and then died a horrible death on that cross, was tortured with a cat of nine tails and scourged to the place where he almost any human would have died from it. His body was ripped open, torn open for you. His blood shed on that cross so that you could call upon him right now and be saved. John 3, 16 through 18. And you know, the Lord says for people that call upon him and believe in him, there's no more condemnation for those people. That the wrath of God will pass over them. They will never see or experience the wrath of God, ever. And a good representation of that, if you just want a good visual image, is the Passover. You put, you sacrifice a lamb, innocent lamb, that represents Jesus on the cross. You sacrifice the lamb, you take the blood, and you put it on the doorposts, and the lentil, and if you draw that out, it makes a sign of a cross. And that's what Jesus did. His blood was shed so that you could have forgiveness of sin. That lamb's blood was shed so that the angel of death would pass over the Jews in that house 
and the firstborn of all Jews that were in a Jewish home where the blood was applied, the firstborn was not killed. But the firstborn of the Egyptians was killed. So that's what's going to happen when the rapture takes the believers up and out, where we meet the Lord in the air. The people left are going to experience the wrath of God. Why? They don't have the blood of Christ applied to their sin. Their sin isn't forgiven. They haven't accepted and put their faith and the Savior of the world. So therefore, God can't protect them from his wrath. Their choice, not God's. So do that today. Ask Christ into your life. Do it now. And remember, go to brosteff.com, brosteff.com, and connect with me right there. And, uh, I'd appreciate it if you would share this podcast, like it, comment on it, send me your questions. Love to hear from you. You make it a great day. And remember, keep looking up because Jesus is coming sooner than later. This is Bro Steph with Prophecy Insights. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.